Good morning, Susan here. I'm going to walk you through one of my favorite freehand edge to edge patterns. I call it crazy eight, some call it wishbones. I know that there's pantographs out there like this and computerized versions as well. But for me, I love doing freehand quilting. It's relaxing, it's repetitive, and this is one of the great patterns that is closely related really to handwriting in that it's a very simple kind of figure eight shaped motion and you just repeat it over and over again. And I've got some helpful tips for how to keep your lines straight, keep your sizing um, consistent, I guess is what I'm going for. And so I'll just walk you through the steps of how that looks when I'm setting up the pattern and when I actually do it and then the result that we get. Some of my favorite tools for freehand quilting are painter's tape, um, inexpensive tape. You don't want masking tape. It's a bit too sticky, but any painter's tape will work. And I'll show you how I use that in a minute, basically to mark out straight lines so that I don't have to put any actual markings on my quilt. When I do need to mark little things, I tend to use white chalk, um, unless of course you're on a white thing, in which case you need a marker. But for most colors, this will work. It's just the least expensive school chalk you can find. I sharpen it in a pencil sharpener and keep sharpening it whenever I need to. And just any kind of ruler that's got um, inches marked on it will be helpful too. Okay, I've got my trusty painter's tape laid down. For my first repeat, I've put it about four inches from the top and I don't carefully measure all the way along. I just, I use the border that's in my quilt, figured out where it was relative to the tape here. Just smooth that tape all the way across. So that's gonna mark my stitching line for the first pattern. And it's, I find it helpful to mark out a little bit my spacing the first time across because you're going to establish this spacing and continue it for the rest of the quilt. You kind of want to get it right. After you've done a few quilts with this design, you might just dive into it. But I'll show you kind of how I mark the first one. It gives you a starting point. So about every inch and a half works good for the figure eight loops. So I'll just mark a few loops across the bottom, really basically with my chalk. And I'll do the same thing at the top, but of course the top loops are going to be staggered in between. Just eyeballing, I'm just going to my ruler over so that they're approximately in between the ones that are on the bottom. And that's probably enough. At that point, I'll have a feel for how big my swoops are and how far apart my loops are. Okay, I'm going so to start quilting about halfway between in the middle of my segment. And I will just go ahead and do my top loop first as that's the one I've marked closest. So I'll head straight into that top loop and then start into my figure eight motion. A little lock stitch to begin. Okay, so getting set up for our second line, this time, of course, our figure eights are going to uh, nest in between the existing ones, so we're going to only move down about three inches. This is not an exact science, by the way. Just ballpark three inches. Get your tape on there. Again, I'm going to use the little border that's in place here as my guideline. I'm just going to run that tape across in a more or less straight line. So I'm back on the left side of the quilt again. You may be able to figure eight left and right, but I can only go from left to right. So once again, I'm going to start in approximately the middle of my loops, and I'm going to go up and make my loop right beside the bottom loops of my first row. And you'll see as I do it, it'll make more sense. Before I go too far down the quilt, I usually come back and on this top row, you're missing the loops that would ordinarily fall between these spaces, right? So I'm gonna go back and put those in. Um, I just find it looks a little more finished to do that. So I just get my threads locked at the beginning again and just loop and travel. Once again, we're going to move the tape down approximately three inches. And I should mention here too, this is quite flexible. 
I tend to, when I'm getting closer to the end of my quilt within 12 or 15 inches at the other end, I will measure how many full inches are left and divide it up into pieces. You could be a little less than three, you could be probably as much as three and a half or three and three quarters, and it wouldn't look vastly different so that you don't end up with half a row at the bottom, but you can space a little bit, a few smaller or larger rows. So once again, I'm gonna go a fairly generous three inches and I don't do this too carefully. I don't measure all the way across. I just determine my tape relative to some of the parallel lines in the quilt, get it on there. I have one more variable to throw into the mix for you. Give these figure eights a try using a constant or unregulated speed on your machine. I think that this really helps to smooth out your motions and make them really fluid. I find that a lot of times when I'm doing edge to edge, I tend to go toward this constant motion. If I have the stitch regulator on, somehow that surging of the motor is just a little bit distracting. And I think that a lot of people claim that it um, retards just the smoothness of the curves as well. But for me, it's just the distracting sound of it. And it's just very soothing and very rhythmic to take the regulation off and just stitch with the constant needle motion. You can get some really smooth curves and smooth um, motions. Also, if you're having trouble getting your figure eights to be symmetrical, to have the left and right sides of them looking the same, experiment with doing it at a higher speed. Sometimes that just helps to, instead of carefully tracing around each curve, to just swing and get into the rhythm and the motion, sometimes that will help to get a smoother and more symmetrical look. Give it a try. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. You can see more of my work on social media as Stitched by Susan. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, and I have a website, stitchedbysusan.com. Let me know what you think of this pattern, and by all means, post pictures if you give it a try.